they wish to ask a supplementary question. Uh, Mr Dowd will be automatically asked a supplementary question at the start. All others should rise in their place. Minute, uh, Clerk, can you please read the question? To ask the Minister for the Economy what action her department plans to take to help avoid the loss of 500 jobs at Thompson Aero Seating in Banbridge and Portadown. I call the Minister for the Economy. <coughs> thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you uh, to the member for this uh, very important question at a very difficult time. Um, can I say that, first of all, our thoughts are with those uh, in uh, Thompson Aero Seating. Uh, who face an uncertain future. I was in touch uh, with the company again today, um, and I understand that conversations with the unions will progress this afternoon. These are very difficult times. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an immediate and unprecedented impact on the global aerospace industry. Both airlines and airports across the world have been severely impacted. The COVID-19 crisis has resulted in a number of airlines cancelling aircraft contracts and the aircraft manufacturers Airbus and Boeing reducing their build rates by 40%. Those are quite staggering figures in a very short period of time. Unfortunately, these global conditions has resulted in Thompson Aero seating having to reduce headcount. Invest NI has maintained regular contact with the company since February 2020 on the challenges uh, resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. These job losses are deeply regrettable and our thoughts remain with those workers um, who will lose their source of income. Invest NI will work with the local council, the Department for Communities, uh, to establish redundancy clinics in conjunction with the company. And clearly, my career service will also provide support as appropriate. Our focus going forward remains on securing the long-term success of the business, and Invest and I are fully engaged with Thompson Aero Seating on a number of projects. Generally, can I say that I am in touch with other aerospace companies and indeed, this morning uh, was talking to some of those companies which are a very important part of the supply chain uh, for our larger companies in Northern Ireland. These are very difficult times for those companies and uncertain times. This issue is for us very local, um, but there is a wider global and national context I do have weekly conversations with Bez and the Minister for Business, um, highlighting the importance of the aerospace sector, uh, both locally and nationally, um, and uh, the risk to that sector. And I think it is acknowledged uh, nationally um, that that is a red flag issue, um, and the risks are very great to the sector. I will continue to ask for support at a national level, um, as well as working with companies uh, on a local level as well. Thank you. I call John O'Dowd for supplementary. Um, thank you, Alas and Koya. Thank the Minister for her answer thus far. Though I have to express disappointment, because the question asks what actions and plans her department are going to take to help avoid the loss of 500 jobs at Thompson's Aerospace. Our, our and within your answer, I don't see any actions. The Council will give a careers advice and, and, and other advice. Uh, the trade union discussions are about the 90-day statutory redundancy. What is the Department of the Economy doing? At the start of this crisis, we talked about ripping up the economic rulebook, and it needs ripped up, not only to save these jobs, but other jobs. I would hope that the Minister is engaging with the Chancellor around extending the furlough scheme, because these jobs can be saved. If the, 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 these jobs can be saved over the next number of months, there is a chance for more contracts for this factory. But the fact of the matter is the furlough scheme deadline is the 10th of June, which is tomorrow. So if that can be extended, we can help save these 500 jobs Question. for when the economy returns. So will the Minister speak to the Chancellor about extending the furlough scheme and help save these 500 jobs. 
Can I thank uh, the member for his question? Um, I understand uh, the urgency and the passion. Um, can I say that I speak and have a, a fairly regular um, um, meeting with the other um, devolved administrations and the Chancellor and the Business uh, Secretary. We have already raised the issue of the furlough scheme. And in fact, I raised the issue of the furlough scheme again with Thompson's this morning. Um, and that issue um, really surrounds the fact that the furlough scheme as currently constituted um, will be closed to new applications from the 10th of June. So if there were to be an opportunity to save these jobs in that way, then um, that would mean that there would have to be amendments uh, to the scheme uh, by the Chancellor at a, a national level. That request, of course, uh, has gone to the Chancellor. I hope uh, that they will respond positively, but I think that we have to uh, acknowledge the difficulties uh, around that. Um, can I say, on the longer term basis, again, I, was, I um, was talking to the company this morning, and Invest and I um, are engaging with the company because we want to see the company remain, we want to see uh, the workforce maintained, um, and we want to try to win uh, as many jobs uh, back uh, for this industry as we possibly can do. And um, I think that uh, while the, the production line and the order book is secure in the very immediate short term, um, I think there then will come a period for many of these companies in the medium term during the period while uh, new, no new contracts, no new tenders are being sought, uh, that life does become uh, increasingly difficult. That is why um, Invest and I are working with the company on their new R&D projects. Um, that is why we want to see these projects brought to fruition, um, because that will stabilise the company in the long term and ensure that we have uh, aerospace seating production, uh, build and capacity uh, in Banbridge and Portadown. I call Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Speaker, and again, with all politics being local, I am absolutely devastated about this job loss. Uh, 500 employees from my constituency and, 13, uh, and a company that employs 1,300 across the constituency. Well, the Minister has outlined her ambition to, to write to the Chancellor, furlough is essential to try and save these jobs. But do you agree with me? It's a gross irony to hear Mr O'Dowd criticise and sympathise with those employees, given that at the middle, midst of the COVID crisis, he, alongside his party leader, Michelle O'Neill were closing on major companies like Thompson's and others to close their doors, knowing the pressures that existed because of orders that needed to be met. Can I uh, thank uh, the member uh, for his question? Um, I will, of course, um, be in touch and continuing uh, to be in touch uh, with the Chancellor and the Business Secretary in London. These are very, very important issues. Um, and on the second part of his question, can I pay tribute to those businesses who kept going in the face of very, very challenging uh, circumstances right throughout this pandemic? Uh, Thompson's Aero Seating was one of those companies in Portadown, um, along with Ulster Carpets, that uh, did keep going um, and are busy trying to fulfil their order books, stabilise the company and ensure that there is a future and jobs uh, to support families in our local area. I will continue to support those companies uh, and will continue to do what I can, uh, both with our national government and uh, here locally in Northern Ireland, to ensure that there is a future for the aerospace industry in Northern Ireland. I call Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Deputy Speaker and Ministers. Uh, another member who shares the constituency with yourself, I too am devastated uh, by the job losses, but no doubt it's not the, the first that we'll hear of, uh, given the recession that we're facing into. But, Minister, you, there, there are two strands. It's obviously the 500 jobs that have been potentially lost and then sustaining those going into the future. So in terms of Invest NI working with the company, you know, will there be a skills audit? Will there be and are there ongoing discussions with neighbouring man manufacturing industries within the constituency and broader, which will help to match some of the workers? Were there some urgent retraining need? Will measures be put quickly in place and will there be a flexibility of approach by Invest NI and yourself in responding to whatever opportunities may arise? 
thank uh, the member for a question. Um, it is uh, a very, very important issue that you raise going forward. Can I just say for the House that when we uh, got uh, the uh, unemployment figures for the month of April, the numbers in those in that, in that, and the new additions to the register in the month of April completely wiped out six years of very hard work reducing unemployment in Northern Ireland. I think that that is a measure of the uh, crisis that has been caused by COVID-19 and the impact that it will have on jobs and families in Northern Ireland. And I think that right across this house, on all sides of this house, I think that is, uh, people will be um, really sympathetic to that and understand how deeply impacted communities and families will be by that figure. So that is, that is part of, of, of where we're at and part of the ongoing crisis. Um, Invest and I are currently working um, with uh, Thompson Aero Seating on uh, their recovery plan, which they've um, called Project Phoenix. Um, and that includes uh, some R&D development on new seating prod uh, products uh, that they, they can bring forward for uh, the airline industry. Ultimately, the extent and timing of the recovery, and there will be a recovery um, in, in aerospace in Northern Ireland, the skills we have um, are absolutely fantastic. There will be a recovery, but um, the timing of that will depend on that global environment and the, the, the new orders that are placed by the bigger uh, companies um, on this. Um, these are difficult times. I have not tried to sugarcoat that, um, but we will work with companies in the best way that we can. I think that you raise another really important issue because what we now need to do is look at how we can match skills with other companies and how we can help people to retrain and upskill. And this morning I had a conversation with all six of the further education principals uh, throughout Northern Ireland. And that's one of the issues that I really want us to get to grips with so that we are really trying to match people with skills, to, trying to upskill people, and that we're offering retraining right throughout our working life and not just to um, the younger uh, elements uh, of our society, important as that is. But I think we can all be challenged and we can all retrain and we can all upskill at different times. And that is part of our work in progress. I call Doug Beatty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and I thank the member for bringing this, this question, which, which is really important to us being in my constituency area. Uh, and I thank the minister for her answer uh, so far. And it's all well and good talking about 500 possible um, job losses. But what on earth did we do about the 350 job losses from the same company two months ago, where they were non contract workers or agency workers who were dismissed? and nothing was done to support them. Did the department not see this coming, Minister, when that happened? The, um, you're quite right, um, and I thank you for your question. You're quite right when you say um, that this has come in two tranches, really. And the first uh, tranche um, was uh, the, the redundancies in the early part of this year, which were largely um, agency workers. Yes, um, my department has been working with uh, the aerospace uh, sector, um, and I think that um, in the number, next number of weeks that will become increasingly clear um, as to the work we've been doing, um, because we recognise that with uh, the global pandemic that we've had, with the shutdown of air travel, with the difficulties um, for people moving around uh, globally, um, that that has resulted in very difficult trading conditions for the aerospace sector. We will continue to work uh, with the sector as a whole because we want to see the st sector stabilised and we want to see it to be in a position where it can grow once again in Northern Ireland. And as I said to uh, my colleague also from Upper Ban, we want to keep and maintain the skills and build the skills base so that we do not lose those people uh, for when we recover, and we will. I call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank Mr O'Dowd for the urgent oral question. I think it's very important. And as Mrs Kelly said, this is probably 
Well, it's not probably. It's actually the, not the first of many job losses and potential job losses announcements that are going to be coming down the road. What people are looking for and what workers are looking for is not sympathy. They're looking for hope. They're looking for a clear, robust recovery strategy of how we're going to get through this, how we're going to save scarred jobs and livelihoods. When are we getting that? When are we getting that clear, robust recovery strategy? Because thus far I haven't seen that, and that's what people are looking for. Um, can I again thank uh, the member uh, for his comments? Um, of course, uh, since the very start uh, of the pandemic and where we are now, we have been working, first of all, on those measures to try to maintain and mitigate against the, the uh, impact uh, of COVID-19. And we have done that uh, in a number of ways. And I know that members throughout this House uh, will have uh, been in touch with businesses who have been supported uh, by um, uh, the, the measures that we've put in. But what I now believe that the best opportunity for recovery is to let business get on with doing business and that we actually start uh, to open up the economy in a, a safe and sustained way so that we can allow those businesses in Northern Ireland those people with those entrepreneurial skills, those people who know how to create jobs that sustain families within our communities can get on ahead and do that. Um, and uh, that's the pitch that I have been making uh, to the executive um, for some time now. I'm glad that we have had some progress in relation to that. Um, I'm glad that um, retail um, is largely going to open up this week. Um, I want to see people use common sense uh, practice social distancing, um, be, be sensible about what they do when they're out and about. But I want, and I think that our retail sector can sustain that as they go forward. We've already seen our small shops have operated right throughout uh, this whole pandemic um, and so on, and with a success and safety. So opening up the economy, getting on with uh, where we're going uh, and working. And then I planned uh, to bring uh, some um, new um, ideas uh, around uh, parts of the economy where I think we will, of course, always support, uh, but other parts of the economy which I think we will be able to grow our skills base and actually provide more and better jobs. So I'm talking about our skills in cybersecurity, even in the depths of our uh, pandemic experience here, we were welcoming a new company from the United States with 65 new jobs in cybersecurity. I think that there are specific areas of our economy where our expertise, um, our work with our universities will really help us to grow the economy in a sustained and successful way. I'm looking for clean energy. I really see a lot of innovation around that as well. So for the next number of weeks, we'll be bringing forward some ideas around all of those things that can help, not just to support the sectors that we rely on that are our bedrock, um, but also to grow in other sectors as well. I call Gordon Dunn. I can thank the Minister for her answers. Does the Minister recognise the impact on the supply chain, subcontractors, uh, other suppliers, and the impact this could have on the Northern Ireland aircraft support industry in general? I absolutely do. And uh, just this morning, um, I was talking to um, a company uh, from your constituency um, around uh, this uh, very particular issue. Um, Northern Ireland not just has some very, very successful large aerospace companies, but it has a supply chain with many smaller companies um, that uh, feed into that uh, sector. And there is uh, real danger uh, for them as well in this global uh, uh, crisis uh, that the sector as a whole faces. Um, I will shortly be talking uh, to InvestNI about how we actually support the small uh, uh, suppliers into that larger chain. And I think that that is really important in sustaining the economy, keeping skills uh, and keeping people in jobs. Thank you. I call Liz Kimmins. 
ask him, Corla, and I thank the member for bringing the question today. And like others have said, you know, it's very sad to, to hear of job loss like this, and we, we will hear many more as we go forward. And it brings me, I suppose, to a question along the same vein then around sole traders and, and how many will be facing similar um, challenges going forward. I'd like to ask the Minister, is her department considering any financial support as many are still waiting on, on an update as they've been excluded from uh, the supports that have been made available to date? Can I uh, again thank the member uh, for uh, her question? Of course, um, we have uh, had uh, the grant schemes that uh, have been out in the public domain. Um, and the question of sole traders, um, although that's rather difficult to define, uh, when you come down to looking at particular sections and subsections uh, of that, and many sole traders will, of course, be self-employed people who can refer to the self-employed scheme. I, of course, uh, will continue uh, to look at where we can con uh, provide further help uh, for people uh, within uh, our community and the businesses within our community that have not received help so far. However, I know that the member uh, will have talked to her colleague, the Minister for Finance, uh, and will be aware of the budgetary constraints around this. So uh, it will be dependent uh, on how uh, we actually uh, are able and how the Minister is able to identify the money that is available, uh, and then we can go ahead and look at other types of supports. Thank you. I call Justin McNulty. Can I thank the Minister for coming here today and can I thank the member for tabling the question. West Portadown is obviously not in my constituency. There are obvious, obvious links with Nuri Norma, uh, with people and families affected, and the, the supply chain as well, in fact, the supply chain companies. We are in difficult times, Minister. Unfortunately, there may be many more painful announcements to come in the months ahead, and we need to adopt a strategic approach to deal with the, the uncertainty and with the economic uh, challenges we face. Given the economic uncertainty created by the COVID-19 pandemic, Minister, some employers are hesitant about availing of the additional months uh, announced by the Chancellor for the furlough scheme. Can the Minister give clarity and reassure those companies who are unsure about availing of the additional months uh, furlough support that they will not be punished or they will not be pursued to repay the additional payments, whatever the outcome for their business at this time of huge uncertainty? Um, can I thank the member for his question, but remind him uh, that the issue of these national schemes and uh, how they are administered uh, or how firms relate to them um, is a matter uh, for Her Majesty's Treasury uh, and not for the Northern Ireland Assembly. However, you raise important points in general about uh, the furlough scheme. Um, and I, I am significantly worried. I, I did think at the start that the furlough scheme was not flexible enough so that uh, companies that required specific skills could not have those skills on a particular set of days in the week without getting support for uh, the other uh, days. So I, I did worry that it's not flexible. There's some flexibility being introduced to it. But where I see the greatest difficulty um, at the moment uh, with the furlough scheme uh, is the fact that many uh, companies, particularly small businesses um, in hospitality, retail, that kind of sector, have indicated, and some of these, most, these businesses have had no income for the past three months, um, and are very worried uh, about uh, the contribu uh, contributions that they will be required to make to the furlough scheme at a later stage. Um, and I think that that is a significant worry for us. And that is why I say, genuinely, um, that for all of us, opening our economy, letting business do business, helping business to thrive and families to have support uh, in the labour market is the most important thing that we can do. Um, and I hope that people respond responsibly um, and uh, with everyone's safety in mind. Um, I think also that um, there is a case to be made to the Chancellor around furlough for a little bit of a longer tail of support for some industries, and I think that aerospace and possibly tourism and hospitality are two of those areas where that kind of longer tail of support might be required just to get us through the next six to nine months. I call Paul Free. Uh, speaker, and given that a disproportionate number of my constituents have been affected by Thompson, uh, who had previously lost their jobs in Wright Bus. 
Uh, it proves that this manufacturing industry is indeed a regional industry. Uh, can the Minister provide assurance that, to this House that manufacturing will be supported going forward, companies like Thompson's and Wright Bus, with all the innovation that they have, with Wright Bus having the hydrogen bus uh, innovation hub and Thompson's with their cutting edge technology also? Can there be support there to allow businesses to retract when they have to, but also to increase in size when they have to, when they can? Yes, can I thank the uh, member for his question? Of course, I think that we should be there to support business, um, not just um, when they're there and doing well, but in the tougher times as well. Um, but also, um, business thrives when it can reinvent itself um, and when it can actually produce new research um, and development to actually produce new products. Thompson's is a really good example of that as a company. Wrightbus is another example of that. And I met uh, with uh, Wrightbus last week um, to discuss uh, their ideas around their hydrogen uh, project um, and how we might take that forward as part of our clean green energy supply for the future. I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, thank you to the Minister for coming, and thanks to the member who tabled the question. Um, and first of all, sympathy, thoughts, and solidarity with the hundreds of Thompson workers who are uncertain about their future. And a very, uh, I've worked very hard to make that a cutting-edge firm. Um, we are, unfortunately, going to have many more. Uh, announcements like that in the weeks ahead. What I heard from the Minister was, I'm afraid, not certainty on when we're going to get an updated economic strategy from the Executive. Can we have that? And can I also have thoughts from her on the fact that foreign direct investment is unfortunately not going to be a reliable uh, growth thing for, uh, for Invest and I to be focusing on in the future? We're in a changed world. So will the new economic strategy move us beyond what I'm afraid has been a particular focus on foreign direct investment over the past few years, understanding that in the changed post-COVID world, it's simply not going to be there in the volume that we all would like? I thank the member uh, for his question. I think really what we're trying to achieve here is balance. I think that we need foreign direct investment because it provides uh, numbers of jobs uh, and it has provided us with jobs in areas uh, of specific expertise. So I think that that is important that we achieve balance. However, it is absolutely and always absolutely vital that we support our indigenous companies, that we give them time and space with their research and development, that we allow our universities to work with them. And if I uh, can reflect um, again um, on the cybersecurity company um, that invested uh, in Belfast just very, very recently, and one of the reasons they told me for their investment was the fact that our universities uh, and industry work so closely together. So I see that particular combination as a really, really good um, basis for us to move forward on. And in fact, later on today, I will be talking uh, to the Minister for Universities um, and the Minister for Research uh, in London and around a research strategy for the whole of the United Kingdom, because I, I do believe that investing in research and development is the way that we will reinvent business, reinvent the economy, and help us to be successful into the future. I call Jim Allister. Could I agree with the Minister on the urgency of reopening our economy? It's a pity that some of those who were so gung-ho about closing it all down with no thought for tomorrow hadn't been a bit more far-seeing. Um, one wouldn't need to be an economist, I think, to work out that the aero industry is going to be one of those with the toughest path into the future. With that in mind, and bearing in mind the assistance being given by Invest NI, etc., what scope is there and how far is it being pursued to discuss diversification with these firms? Because it is hard to foresee that there will be the same volume of demand for aircraft seats in the immediate to medium future. So are there opportunities for diversification that could be explored and are they being explored? Can I thank uh, the member for his uh, comments around the economy? Um, I agree with him. Um, we need to let business do business and get on with things um, in a safe and sustained manner. Um, can I also say that, um, yes, there is scope 
um, to look at diversification. And I think that that's particularly important when we look at the supply chain. I am always really, really encouraged um, and indeed at times completely surprised um, by parts of the supply chain, for example, into uh, the aerospace industry started off as small companies making agricultural tools um, within uh, our communities. So yes, um, reinventing uh, ourselves is something that we have done, something that we will be able to do, and something that I hope we'll be able to give support for going forward. And that is the end of our period of urgent oral questions. Point of order, Mr. Gibbon. Um, point of order, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Um, in the course of the remarks by the Justice Minister, um, she challenged the Speaker uh, and the decision process of granting the urgent oral. Is it in order for a Minister to challenge the ruling of a Speaker and the comments designed to have a chilling effect on the Speaker and members like me that are here democratically mandated to hold to account those Ministers responsible, and in this case, for Regulation 5 and 6? The member has made his point, and I will refer the matter to the Speaker for further consideration. Uh, but his point is on the record. Now let us continue. We now return to the motion for support for sheep and beef farmers through the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm